this new crew and his family too feel like the clam bit clan. I wanna work and do my part. That is that is cool, my friend. I love that banjo and that White House blues, and that is Woody Guthrie. And it's got that old school folk Vietnam era. We gotta do something about this stuff, right, my friend? Thank you, JP. Yeah, you're welcome. That's exactly it. That that was um, kind of my that's my protest song, so yeah. to speak. And uh, I thought it would be kind of fun. To do it, the whole um, CD is full band, but uh, there are two songs that are full acoustic band. The first three are are all electric band, and um, it translated real nicely into that format with the mandolin and the dobro and the harmonica, and kind of like uh, somebody reviewed it and said it, it's got a it's got a real old time jug band <laughs> feel, which um, that definitely part of where I'm coming from is that early 20th century Memphis street musician type of a thing, like kind of down at home and we're just singing about stuff we know about and this is the way we play. In that instrument that Kevin Berry, I was reading the bio stuff you got, that dobro, is that what he's playing? That's kind of like a mandolin? Is that what that sound is? No, it's actually uh, it's actually technically called a resonator guitar. Okay. It's commonly called a dobro, but dobro was just a brand of resonator guitar, and it's a, a it's an instrument. They they you can play them. They have round necks or square necks, and Kevin was playing a square neck on his lap, like the bluegrass guys played, like oh. Gary Douglas and Mike Aldridge, and um, that see. style of music. It's it's basically a, it's a lap style guitar. It was a early, they they were invented in the 1920s. Um, and it was a Hawaiian musician in the early 1900s that first started playing like that, and it became this whole style of playing and is obviously real popular in bluegrass and country music today. And um, Kevin is an excellent player, and I am pretty sure that 20 years ago I sold Kevin his first lap-style guitar when we were uh, working for another band together. And I got him into it. Now he's a monster player. I could be wrong, but I think I, I think I sold him his first electric lap steel. And he's a giant in the in the industry and the go to lap style teacher in the Boston area. And how how great is that, JP? Uh, for you and all your friends for a highway cruise to get together and make this now and be able to celebrate it today. Your release was last week. Momentum is going to keep going on the Roots Music Report and the charts and everybody out there. Again, yes, you can hear it at Humagu the interview, but CD Baby. You know, we were talking off air about the Spotify and the online streaming and all that for the artist. And yeah, you got to get out there and buy the things for everybody. You know, at least I can record. Right. You have to listen to me to hear the, you know, not always, but you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, everything yeah. out there is promote you guys. That's what I do this show for, and, and to buy this yeah. stuff for everybody, you know. And that's great, and, and, and I'm very grateful that people, that you and other people are, are out there doing this because, um, like I mentioned earlier, I have no misconceptions of what this is going to do. This This is... Um, this is 
more than a hobby, a little less than a full time job for me. Yeah. And uh, I do it because I love the music and I want to keep the music alive. And your show and other programs like it help get the music out to people that are looking for it. I have I have plenty of friends who have sent me emails and texts that listen to podcasts and internet radio shows and independent radio show and they say hey man i just i just heard your song i had a friend of mine actually shoot me a video on his phone and email it of me of he lives in new orleans and i uh, was being played on a local blues station down there and he emailed me the front of his the radio in his car and the music playing in the background and there are people out there and it's guys like you that help connect musicians like me to the people who want to hear this this music Amen, JP. And I was telling you off air that half the fun for me is to figure this thing out because I, this is all free. And there's no income and pay out actually for the fees, but that's not the point. I'm learning things and growing and able to do tools. I can, I took this to Nashville and I streamed my friend Jeremy Parsons at the Swinging Door Saloon live. Uma Google is live. This is live right now. As he was playing, I'm streaming him live like a radio station. Um, that's So that's the kick I get, you know? And I tell you, yeah, after, that's cool. Yeah, those kind of things that I get because of your music, and then promote this out to everybody. So it's it's kind of like that that pirate radio a little bit, you know, that one movie where they're in the. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great movie. I love that movie. Yeah, that's how I feel like because yourself and myself, we grew up in that FM radio days. You know what I mean? The progressive radio. Oh yeah, we're playing this deep song at midnight, and this is kind of what I'm trying to get at. We're trying to do for you, and then you know for yourself too. And uh, your friends, and uh, you know, and again, I was saying a lot of the independent guys on my end, it's, it's somewhat of the equipment end, and it's advertising. I don't even know how they get any income from that. Me, I just love the karma when it comes from talking to people like you and hearing your stories. That's what makes my show rock. Well, that's great, and I, I can just speaking for myself, I love talking about music period is especially my music uh, and american music and um american roots music blues rock bluegrass country whatever you want to call it so it's fun for me too so once again thanks for doing it for all of us oh absolutely absolutely and let's get into the whiskey for blood that we got one last tune we need to crank a little bit and again you have some previous releases that you go back to too was it 2007 let me also talk about some of the other stuff that you've had out there for everybody. 2007, you also released a Cold Steel Blues, the album. Yeah, that and was my first solo release. And then 2010, you had the battle, uh, the bottle of boo, uh, blues, blues, yeah, blues, blues, yes, yeah, and uh, yeah. Congratulations! You also Blue Society Battle of the Band solo category in 2010, and. The International Blues Challenge. Now, that is a cool deal. I got to talk to Bridget Purdy down there and uh, Lawrence Lebo, also live, because that whole network that you guys have with Betsy Brown, what a great team that you have with them, eh? Yeah, and I, I actually hope to be going back to Memphis in January of 2020, because I'm going to... haven't done it in a while, but I decided with the new album and the new songs that I would compete again in the Washington, D.C. Blue Society Battle of the Bands in the yeah. solo category because I'm the guys that play to my band, they all live in Boston. I would consider them my band and and book book that book gigs with them as my band if we lived in the same city. <laughs> right. But I'm in the in the in the process of trying to put a band together to get out there and actually play some electric gigs. In the meantime, I'm still performing solo acoustic Piedmont blues, Piedmont and Delta blues originals and covers. Because when you play a three-hour gig, I have enough songs, to, originals to probably play for two hours. But mm -hmm. when I'm playing a gig, people are always coming to see me to, to hear me play Robert Johnson or Blind Willie McTell or Reverend Gary Davis or uh, Charlie Patton or Sunhouse or something like that. That's become part of my repertoire that people when they they come to see me they know they're going to hear these classical blues songs so you know unless you're buddy guy if you're playing in a blues club you're going to play mustang sally <laughs> and walk in blues and hesitation blues or whatever yeah so that, that and i got no problem with that because i love all those songs yeah i mean just when you hear mustang Sally, you can do mustang sally you know that comes to 
you know, all that. It, it, the music and the karma, and like you were saying, it, we're, all these things we're doing here is making the world a better place in our little ways. That's right. I say. And that's the, right. That, the, that's ultimately it. Ultimately it and all that. And uh, Whiskey for Blood. Let's uh, let's wrap a little bit about that one and then talk a little bit exactly where you're going this summer, where you're playing out, and we'll uh, finish up the show. So tell us a little about the tune and then we'll get into what's going on this summer. Uh, Whiskey for Blood. Well, what, what, Whiskey for Blood is once again in continuing with the, the theme of how I wrote the songs for this album except for the title song. Whiskey for Blood is another song that I wrote the words first. first. And um, the, I find it easy to write a blues song. What's difficult is to make it a good blues song. Because I read, I read in a book, maybe um, the country blues, um, oh man, is, the author is escaping the famous guy, um, who wrote that book, uh, he interviewed some old blues musician mm-hmm. that said, oh, it's easy to write a blues song. You just pick up something, you pick up a pen and yeah. and describe five five things about it. And there you go, you have five verses. Uh, uh, Bill Ferris, that's his name, who yes. wrote the country blues back in the late 50s. And there was an album that I have, the, an original copy of that accompanied it, giving examples of what he was talking about. And so I approach writing blues songs in that manner and... I came up with the um, the first line, and I went, okay, this is this could easily be a 12-bar tw- blues. And once again, it was, once I wrote the words, it was trying to find an appropriate style of music and um, working, sending audio files back and forth via email with Duke Levine. I said, hey, we could, I've recorded me playing a solo acoustic version like in El- Elmore James with a bottleneck. I did a couple of different finger style uh-huh. versions, yeah. and what we what we came up with was me playing the finger uh, style pattern, which is um, based on a Big Bill Brunzi theme song. Like, I mean, who who really knew who wrote this stuff? But I was influenced by all these old musicians, and what I try to do is write songs in the traditional styles i try to keep this the music alive by writing in the traditional styles i don't feel like i'm stealing licks because there's nothing new under the sun in 2019 and there hasn't been anything new under the sun for 50 years really uh certainly in the blues and uh duke said hey why don't we try to like combine these different versions you have and He's a great mandolin player, and we kind of went back to that acoustic jug band theme, and we had Kevin Barry playing on the Dobro, the laps style slide guitar. So that kind of gives it a little delta feel as well. So it, um, and with the harmonica on it too, that definitely helps root it deep in the south of the United States in the, the, the whiny crying harmonica licks in the background. And it just all fell together. And, and um, like I mentioned earlier about the the song "The Ballad of a Burglar," yeah, the album, the version that's on the album was the rehearsal take. So Duke and I were the only ones that communicated. And I got up to Boston, and Duke and I um, spent an afternoon at his house going over the songs and deciding on what versions we were going to do and touching things up. And then we went into the studio, and he he really didn't want at first to be for me to credit him as a producer. And I said, look, you, you, you have to let me do something because you've done so much more than just be a musical director that he influenced what people should play, what instrument they should play. And we were, we were all about the spontaneity of it and not saying you play this, you play this, you play this. We just went, okay, this is what we're going for. Think about it. I played I played a version by myself so everybody could get an idea and then we stopped and let the tape roll and we went and That's... we I don't think we did more than three takes of any song because these that's how good these musicians are they and that in part is because of Duke's ability as a producer to find the right people 
for the right type of music. So 